Hey guys, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the performance tuning of the Zabbix and this one mostly is going to be for production environments, for large environments, big environments and so on. Why this might not be applicable for the small environments? Well, it kind of is, but the thing with the Zabbix is that it's like extremely scalable and you can have large environment monitoring hundreds of thousands of the servers and so on. And you can also have something just sitting in your home lab monitoring five servers as example and if you're monitoring only those five servers then many things that I'm going to be talking about in this video are not as important because based on the load that you are receiving there is not much necessity for all sort of different tuning changing parameters and so on but if you plan to set up Zabbix in production for some production environment monitoring many hosts hundreds thousands items, triggers, 24-7 uptime, and all of that is required, that it might be interesting for you to listen in what I am about to say. And I have written down some key key things. I, I would call those like one, two, three, four, probably five most important things if you want to make sure that your Zabbix is running properly. And the first one is choosing the good architecture because that's... Thing which is most important at the time when you're just spinning up, when you're just deciding how my Zabbix infrastructure actually is going to look like, because, well, you could just, you could install everything on a single bare bones server, Zabbix server, database, front end, maybe have even something else connected to the same database server, but it's not going to end up good by any means. It will definitely cause performance problems as you grow. So my personal recommendation would be to have at least two servers. If we're not talking about a high availability, you need to have two servers where one will be dedicated for the Zabbix server and the front end, and the second will be dedicated server for the database, which is very important, is used only for Zabbix itself. It's also very important to choose the proper hardware, especially if we talk about the database. You need to understand the database is like the heart of your Zabbix installation. It's the most important thing. You can sacrifice a bit uh, on the resources for your Zabbix server or maybe even the front end, but if your database is slow, then hold your Zabbix environment is gonna be slow. So. I would definitely recommend to go with SSDs for the database. We're probably talking at least about 16 gigabytes of RAM, um, starting with eight cores, uh, more is even better. And kind of we could go with eight and eight for the Zabbix server and the front end. But of course, there's not, like no golden standard. Everything uh, depends on how big your instance is planned to be right and if we talk about starting up your zabbix i would definitely also recommend to throw away the housekeeper as soon as you start because eventually housekeeper is going to become the problem it's going to make your database much slow you will see things uh graphs like these when the housekeeper is just constantly 100 busy and that will cause all sort of different issues and while it is possible to switch from the housekeeper to the partitioning even like on the fly when your instance is already big it will create much more issues and uh, will require much more time to do that so i would recommend to start your sabix installation with partitioning database for at least for the history and the trends but this might this might come up with a question like but how can i do that because everybody talked that okay you need to partition the database but how exactly because MySQL uh, stored procedures, that's something I would personally not uh, recommend. Um, yeah, and and everybody are talking about some scripts, that external scripts that you use for the partitioning, but where can you find them? And here is one of the blog posts, uh, Zabbix blog by Nathan, and he's from Open Source ICT Solutions, who's also the partner of the Zabbix. So here you will find a uh, script and also tutorial on how you can actually uh, partition your history and trends table uh, for the Zabbix. This will work on MariaDB and MySQL. If you're running Postgres, then uh, if you're running a Postgres, then you probably should also run Timescale DB. And for Timescale DB setup, you should definitely go to the Initmax, also Zabbix partner uh, wiki page. They have a written down explanation of how you can actually uh, start up with a timescale database, set everything up, 
uh, do the tuning and make sure that everything works and we'll get back to the tuning a little bit later uh, timescale db basically offers like a native partitioning you don't need any external scripts uh, you don't need to worry about them you don't need to worry about them when you uh, move to some new version of operating system distribution or or database it's kind of native partitioning with all of the Postgres uh, goodies that you might have. It's like very good and reliable database. And uh, for many, many years, it works very well uh, with the Zabbix as well. I will throw in all of the links uh, to the description as well. And remember, we talked about database tuning. Like that's, I would say that's probably like the first most important, like partitioning is important, but if you will not set it up from the beginning, Nothing bad is going to happen on a day one or day two. But if you do not tune your database, if you have a default configuration file, then uh, it's just not going to work. As soon as you will start adding some, some load, some monitoring hosts, items, triggers whatsoever, you will start to experience performance issues. And those performance issues are going to come because of not tuned database or your database will not be able to use all of the resources that you have allocated to that server and the only solution to that is proper tuning of database configuration file, which again, usually comes with a question, but how do I do that? What exactly do I need to tune? Because it is much more complicated than tuning like Zabbix server configuration file. Well, again, straight to the description of this video, you will find uh, two links. One is for uh, MySQL. So the same basically the same is going to also apply to MariaDB but be careful with some parameters I would suggest to check documentation uh, by Vittorio very smart guy for uh, all of the MySQL stuff and here you'll find explanation of all the critical parameters and also how to find out the correct values for those if you're running with a Postgres it's kind of a bit more easier I would say there is such thing as PG tune it's kind of a script that you get together with your Postgres uh, database installation. But there's also a PG tune available online, link in the description again, where you just specify what kind of version you have, uh, what kind of operating system type, uh, DB type, I would say probably mixed type of application, how much memory you have, how much CPUs, number of connections, data storage, SSD, very much recommended for the Zabbix. And in, let's do it like 16 gigs, uh, eight core CPUs generate. And there you go, you have a configuration file, optimized configuration file for your Postgres uh, database. And this is not ideal, like this is not 10 out of 10 uh, that you can get, but at least it includes most critical parameters that you should use. And then it's just a matter of min-maxing your setup and if you want to min max then it will require like a lot of reading or again um the first that comes to my mind you can reach out to the init max they're pretty knowledgeable with a postgres and timescale db so i'm pretty sure they can help you out with optimizing your database and finding what kind of bottlenecks you might have and last but not least is uh, tuning your zabbix server configuration file this is also super important by default you don't need to kind of change any parameters for the Zabbix server. The default values are fine, but the default values are fine until you start to uh, put some more monitoring, adding some more hosts and, and items and triggers and whatsoever. So you need to, and, and this is also something no one can tell what is a good value, what is a good number for you, because it very much depends on your specific environment, your network latency, uh, your item types, your trigger expressions, your server, your environment will have very specific requirements for some parameters here. So it's not something you can just find online like tune Zabbix server configuration file and apply to your Zabbix server. How to understand what kind of values do you need to increase? I would always recommend to check your Zabbix because when you just spin up, you already have this host called Zabbix server, right? And this one is monitoring the performance of your Zabbix server. And this one is the one on which you actually need to rely when you are thinking about tuning and optimizing Zabbix server configuration file. So what you need to do is go to the monitoring hosts, find your Zabbix server hosts, click on the dashboard, and here you will find a Zabbix server health. Uh, what we're looking for is basically 
uh, cache usage. So trend write cache, configuration cache, history index cache, value cache. All of these caches are also present here, which is the Zabbix server configuration file, which is located in Etsy Zabbix, Zabbix underscore server dot conf. And uh, be aware that once you change any parameters here, uh, this the config file will already have the default values listed, so you will not have trouble finding uh, what you need. You always need to restart your Zabbix server for the changes to actually apply. Uh, don't forget that. So if you see that some of the caches are close to 100% usage, I would even say close to like 75%, then it is time to schedule some uh, maintenance for your Zabbix server. Find the affected cache that is running out of being free and just increase it in your Zabbix server configuration file and then restart the Zabbix server itself. How much increase? I would say like at least initially when we're not talking about gigabytes is like double. Uh, some of them will have like 16 megs in configuration cache where maybe it's even eight. So if that is running out and configuration cache holds um, information about all of your monitoring uh, configuration, like items, triggers, uh, host that needs to be monitored, uh, update intervals and all that stuff. So as you add more hosts, more templates, more items, it will require more configuration cache. And if you see that you're running out of it, then just increase it. How much? Well, double it, first of all. And then again, after 10 minutes, come back to this graph, see what's the current uh, usage of the configuration cache. Is it enough? Is it sufficient? Or perhaps you need to increase it even more. And the second important thing is uh, uh, we're performance processes yeah so processes utilization of all of the discovery processes low level discovery pre-processing connector gathering processes like polar data ipmi http polar each of these is responsible to collect uh its own um type of items like snmp monitoring for your network stuff will use some specific type of uh data collector, right? Uh, if we talk about the Zabbix agent, again, it's going to be something else. If we talk about API monitoring through HTTP agent, it's going to be something else. And it's the same flow as with the caches. You just open the graphs and see, okay, which process is busy. Okay, I see that HTTP Polar is 100% busy. And if it's 100% busy, then you basically start to experience some uh, performance uh, negative effects on this monitoring type as example if you have hundred of items monitoring api and your http http polar is 100 busy then very likely some of those items will start to get delayed and if those items are delayed and you're having some no data triggers then those might fire but there's no problem with the monitored host there's actually a problem with the data collection and to resolve it again find in your Zabbix server configuration file, the correct like uh, HTTP, start HTTP polars, default value is just one. And if you recently added a lot of uh, hosts and items that are using this, then it's time to increase it. Don't top out, don't specify 1000, it's definitely not, good, not a good idea. If one is 100% busy, make them 10 and come back, check out uh, how busy it is right now. If, if it went down to like 20% busy, then you're fine. But again, don't forget to once a week check out if everything is fine uh, with the processes. And that would be for the tuning. And I just wanted to mention one additional thing is network latency. This might be um, not paid attention too much when everything kind of works. Um, and this might also be the reason why some processes are 100% busy, you might say, but I already have like 100 HTTP polars and we added just a couple of the hosts so why it is 100% busy um, is Zabbix not scalable at all or, or what's the matter so the thing might be that your network is very slow and possibly you've topped out your timeouts and changed them from the default values three seconds to 30 seconds and because of slow network gathering each value is taking like 25 seconds while normally if there are not any issues to gather a single value it usually takes like 0.0 something seconds so latency is something that you definitely need to be aware about worry about and make sure that everything is good with your network if you are monitoring some distributed locations some remote environments 
then very likely instead of directly monitoring through your Zabbix server, it would be recommended to deploy a Zabbix proxy on that end. And Zabbix proxy will kind of remediate all of the problems that might be caused by a uh, slow network. So that's kind of initial insight on the most important things that you need to think about, uh, about the Zabbix server tuning for large environments. If you have any questions, just go ahead and ask them in the comments. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. See you later and goodbye.